Shout out to the squad out there. We got Forex Shark coming in for a bullish, a bullish, a bullish AMA. Shout out to everybody in the building. Hit the like button on the way in. Tell a friend to tell a friend that Forex Shark is coming on live. Let's go. Hit the like button on the way in. Shout out to the squad out there. I think I messed up some sound. Give me a second, guys. Let me make sure that everything is situated. No sound, no sound. Damn. Damn, I was hearing it good. All right, let me, let me, let me. Hmm. Let me fix this stuff. Damn, bruh. You guys hear me, though. No, you hear me. Okay. That's good. That's good. Ah, right, let's just go straight to the voice chat. Oh, he's still cooking up. Yeah, man. I'm just... We setting up some different things. So I'm playing around with a few things. You guys hear that now, right? Guys, let me know if you see and hear the uh this audio right here let me know if you see and hear that audio right there what about this video you can hear this video you can hear this video you can hear rev let me know if you guys can hear rev you can't hear rev so you guys cannot hear rev why not i wonder no rain sounds and no rev probably you can't hear now. Uh we're gonna we gonna we're gonna play with that another time. Shout out to everybody in the building, of course. Hit the like button all the way in. Forex is gonna be coming on the live in a minute. And he's got some very bullish updates and um you know a couple of things that is worth noting to pay attention to is that dogs are, is gonna be something where dogs is gonna be something where there's not gonna be uh, inflation through minting the token, but rather there's going to be dogs being bought on the market and being distributed as as rewards. So Forex is going to break that down a little bit more clear. So let's go. And also, let me know if you guys hear Forex well when he starts talking. Shout out to everybody in the building. Hit the like button on the way in. So once he starts talking, let me know when you let me know. Let me get that sound check from the squad. Once they start getting shout out to everybody in the building. Shout out to Max Monkey. Shout out to New Inception. Shout out to IMO. Shout out to Shinx. Shout out to Ginger. Shout out to AKA. Shout out to everyone who's in the in the stream. So we're about to see Forex in a minute. Shout out to Susie S in the building holding it down. Shout out to Aaron Clark. Shout out to Fairlass in the building. Shout out to the squad. <clears throat> squad is in the building. Shout out to Ski Mass Citizen in the building. Let's go. So, yeah, man, you know, we're all waiting patiently. I told you guys in the beginning of the month, man, September, woo, bearish, very bearish. But um, October looking like it might be a hype. But, Ray, 
Midnight Madness. So guys, I don't know if you can hear. I've got my. I'm still getting over my cold, but I'm feeling better. But I'm still getting over it. Still getting over it a little bit. You know what I mean? Still getting over it. I think they. they I don't know. I'm not gonna get into no conspiracies. <laughs> Yo, so many people got sick, man. It's crazy. So many. So shout out to everybody in the building, man. Make sure you guys are taking your black seed oil. Make sure you guys are taking your raw garlic out there. Make sure you guys are taking things to prevent yourself from getting sick, man. But um, unfortunately, sometimes, you know, certain things bust through the defenses. You know what I mean? Something. And then, you know, I rarely get anything. So, you know what I'm saying? I just got to maintain. Damn, why wasn't the sound working, though? That's whack. That's so whack. I wonder why. I wonder why you guys cannot hear that. That's so strange. I wonder why. Hmm. It's like I gotta adjust this every single time, bro. Nah, there's a way to do this right here. Let me see. Let me output. Yeah, no, nah, I gotta. Hmm. I know you guys can hear me, but you guys can't hear the the the, the rain music. I'm trying to figure out why y'all don't hear me. I mean, hear the the music. This right here, monitor only. That's it. Okay. Yo, you guys can hear Forex. Let me know. Let me get a sound check on Forex. I will give an update. Um, we, well, I'll wait for people. I'll, I'll wait for people to come in and uh, i'll get into it but yeah we have some big updates so um i'm excited to get into it power off now you guys can hear forex so yeah he's coming back on let me see sir so then boom let me see. He says he's coming back. He's coming back in a few. Shout out to everybody in the building. All right. Let me see. Oh, yeah. We should be good. We should be good. Let's test out some sound again. Let's test out some sound. I think, you know, now you guys hear it double time. Now you guys hear it double. But now you guys hear it good. Chat, let me know if you guys hear it good now. I bet you guys hear it good. Now you guys hear it good. Let me let me let me know if, let me know if you guys hear this good. This this is gonna sound good. Let me know. Let me get a sound check on the music. My bad guys. Let me get a sound check. Yeah, now you guys can hear the music. Silent? Damn. I could have swore that would have worked. No, not... Okay, let me see. I think you guys got a delay. Nothing. Let me see. No, no music. Nope. Let's try another one. Yeah. Do, you guys, do you guys hear but, this one? But please, I am asking, like, I'm not seeing any marketing, maybe like marketing plan. 
you know, I'm not so seeing see any debt accepting the, the marketing proposal, and it's, right? It's not double, so right? I'm just asking if Rick, maybe it is now for a good entry, but but I want to buy it, right? I want to buy it now. I want to see. Oh, why did it cut off? So what? I didn't take the right clip? My bad. My bad. All right, guys. I'm just messing with a whole bunch of stuff, man. I'm just messing with a whole bunch of stuff. Let's go back to... Let's go back to this for a second. Let me make sure I'm good. All the flyers and see them. Sounds good. Single. Uh, I want to buy it. <laughs> I want to see a 2x. I'm not looking to buy a million rupees, I just want to buy the ZD2X. You know what I'm saying? That's all we want, guys. That's all we need. So shout out to everybody in the building. So I'm looking forward to how, to see how efficient that's going to be, right guys? Like to get dog dividends um, from bought dog token instead of through minting and inflation i mean the dog token price is going to go up in theory it's going to take a long for people to sell it so it's going to be a, a nice uh liquidity pool that's going to be getting built there so that's interesting just the main the main thing for us is we need to see dividends in the pig pen because that's what's going to keep people in the pen so if we can get a nice capital flow going into the pen and then that dog adjustment, then we looking good. So these are things that we gotta we gotta listen out for, you know what I'm saying? So rain sounds good. Alright, that's good, that's good. So guys, of course, tonight live at the DJ and Cypher. I believe there might be some alpha tonight. We'll see. I believe there might be some alpha tonight. We will see. We just got to get through this bear timber. We got to get through this bear timber. And we're waiting and anticipating uh, Forex Shark to press that button. To set things up. To take off the band-aid. So that way the Drip Network community can have a token. A deflationary token to build upon a strong foundation and to be able to set, you know, things properly. No more BS, no more B, B, uh, no more, no more crap. You know what I'm saying? Everybody having the same opportunity, the same shot at the same time. And then we'll see, you know, nobody can, you know, um, rely on the work of others you know what i'm saying like anybody can take drip into their own hands so that's what makes drip 2.0 you know greater and of course it's going to be a, a small fraction of percentage of people who are going to complain about x y and z but at the end of the day it's like we need to move forward and we need to you know, be able to come up with solutions so that way we can progress drip to where it needs to be. And then who knows, maybe one day in the future, there can be something built to be a more sustainable version of what we have in drip, but done in a different manner. But the beauty of that is in order for that to even be a thing, Someone would have to deeply invest into drip. You know what I'm saying? Someone would have to deeply invest and who is willing to put their money where their mouth is? It's different to talk. It's different to criticize. It's different to say that somebody can't do X, Y, and Z. You can fight, find a fault in anyone. But when it comes to picking up your own pants you know what i'm saying and putting in the work and investing your own capital who is willing to do so and that's what's going to separate the men and the mice 
that's what's going to separate those who are talking about it but rather being about it so we'll see you know what i'm saying i already see people in the community putting up their own capital putting up their own initiatives and putting out different products for the drip network ecosystem and also things that are not public that i see on the side that people are working on fire so imagine 10 20 50 different protocols all right i was on ecosystem mute system i didn't being, realize it being so built. i'm screen sharing here let me know if you guys uh, have, have forex uh the team uploading this right now so everybody can check it out um but i want to go over it now in the call and um and it will get posted at some point while we're in this call and I will post it in the group. So this is a pitch deck that is meant specifically to go out to people who are not extremely technical and be hyper focused on what the value case is and what the utility is of Animal Farm V3 specifically the range optimization product and um before i get into this because i know everybody's uh you know asking do we get a launch date do we get a launch date um we are extremely close the one thing that we have left to do is to test the front end with a public group so uh, this weekend, we are going to uh, plan a public testing group uh, for the front end. Uh, we'd like to have about 30 or 40 people in there uh, to test. And then we can give the launch date once we're, we are sure that there's, um, you know, that, that the, there's no weird stuff uh, going on with the front end. Because I don't want to leave any stone unturned i want this to be um perfect and ready to go when we give the launch date so we're going to be planning to set up this group this weekend anybody that uh is here anybody that's an investor on animal farm uh who wants to participate can participate i would um suggest that people do participate because although this is going to be a lot simpler than uh, other migrations and other launches that we've had in the past, with the dog pound migration, there were plenty of people who were confused, who, you know, made just, you know, a silly mistake. Um, we unlike the dog pond migration the v3 migration doesn't really leave room for mistake that could have any lasting effect on people because there's no deposit and withdrawal fee um if you were to make an accident for example and um you know only migrate a partial position or migrate to the wrong pool or migrate and then withdraw yeah and then you know want to go back in something like that um because there's no deposit withdrawal fees because you don't you won't get locked out or have fees locked in anything like that uh there is you know less room for error but still i think that it would be smart for people who are investors in Animal Farm right now to participate because you will be able to participate in a simulated migration that will be exactly the same as when it goes live. So there's really no excuse for someone on launch date to not know what's going on because we are going to have a couple days where 
we're allowing anybody to come into the group and test the simulated migration on a BSC hard fork and go through the full process. So there will be uh, no surprises uh, when it goes live. Um, everything from a development standpoint is completed. Uh, everything from a um, contract backend perspective um, is completed. Uh, the last thing that we have to do is a uh, group test of the front end um, that typically takes one to two days. And then we are prepared to give the launch date after that. So um, now a lot of things have changed with the tokenomics and the V3 model since we originally had the concept that we wanted to go with. Um, for one, doing the migration of the native token opened up a lot of doors for us. Things such as allowing for people's stakes in the optimized pools to go directly into the dog pound when they withdraw when they claim AFD. So instead of having that AFD when you claim from the dog pound go directly to your wallet where users could make a mistake and transfer it and have a 90% tax applied or add liquidity not through our front end and have a 90% tax applied um, or do a range of other things because they're not familiar with the ecosystem. We've removed that possibility by taking claimed AFD from the optimizer pools and sending it directly to the dog pound. Now, AFD, which is not earned in the optimizer pools or not earned or not staked in the dog pound in order to earn BNB and AFP, if it's the compound uh, nonlinear dog pound, do not have a 90% tax applied to it. This is going to make a major difference, not only in the ease of use of the AFD token, but most importantly, it will remove a barrier for people who want to buy the AFD token as an investment, but were previously concerned that buying the AFD, AFD token as an investment puts them in a position where they have to overcome this major tax hurdle. The point of applying the tax model in the first place was to prevent people from earning AFD and using that as a vehicle to secure profits by immediately dumping it on the market as they earn it. You don't want to have that mechanic prevent people who want to just purchase it as an investment to be affected. You don't want that model to affect people who want to purchase it as an investment because those people are directly putting that BNB capital into the AFD liquidity pool. They're not earning the AFD as a, you know, participation reward token. So any capital that they drive into it through purchasing, it is going to have the basic 6% burn and tax distribution 
But until they use that AFD to earn a yield through putting it into the dog pound, the vesting model is not applied. And, you know, it makes perfect sense. Um, If you are earning a token as a reward, or if you're locking a token to earn rewards, then you want to have a vesting model attached to that. But a person, you know, outright buying the token, driving, you know, instant capital into it is going to be put off and driven away as an investor by having that vesting model applied. So this is the best of both worlds where people who are outright buying the token still are going to absolutely make a positive cash flow into AFD. Even if they were to purchase it and then immediately dump it due to the fact that there is still the base level tax on it. So they are, regardless, they are putting a positive cash flow into the AFD token and into the pig pen and the dog pound. But users who then use that AFD to earn yield, to earn AFP tokens, or who earn that AFD in the form of of yield are placed by default into this vesting model. So with AFD in the new model being a deflationary asset and removing the barrier for purchasing AFD, it's going to have a major effect on the economic incentives of the AFD token. Because we've made major changes to the incentive model and the tokenomics of the AFD token, which without a doubt is massively bullish for the price projection of the token itself, we've made additional changes to how the AFD tax is distributed. So instead of having two thirds of the AFD tax swapped for BNB and sent to the dog pound and one third being swapped for BNB and sent to the pig pen, that is being reversed with two thirds being sent to the pig pen and one third being sent to the dog pound with the idea that AFD by the economic model of the optimizer pools alone and the tokenomics of the asset alone is going to have consistent positive cash flows going towards the price appreciation of the token itself. So buying and holding the token alone or earning and holding the token alone is a major incentive, is is majorly incentivized in itself through price appreciation. Now, on top of this, we are driving additional BNB to the dog pound due to the fact that the BNB driven to the dog pound is 100% relative to the amount of BNB in the AFD liquidity pool. And when you have a model that is driving positive cash flow into the AFD liquidity pool through using 
a percentage of all the trading fees collected on the platform buying AFD directly from the market and burning it, you're going to have an economic model where the ratio of AFD and BNB in the liquidity pool is consistently and due to the fact of our compound interest exponentially growing. So as an AFD holder and a dog pound staker, not only will you benefit from AFD through price appreciation, but also an increased BNB distribution due to a more efficient cash flow of BNB. dog pound stakes that do not allow for people to get multiple tax credits on the same AFD, skirting tax on future earned AFD, due to the positive cash flow and deflationary supply of AFD through the trading fees, buyback and burn mechanism, and through the removal of barriers for both buying the AFD token, the massive ease of use improvement of the AFD token, and the removal of deposit and withdrawal fees in the non-native pools, which make it way more attractive for people to participate as liquidity providers because there's very little risk just trying it out and there's no other platform offering the kind of yield that we're paying out in the assets that are being added to the liquidity pool on all of BSC. So I'm just gonna go through um, this pitch deck. This is a pitch deck that we made for the public. Uh, it's also a pitch deck that we made specifically to target people that do not care so much about every little technical detail but just want to be sold, right? That's why it's a pitch deck and not a technical doc or a white paper. We are also using this for influencers, right? This is being sent out to a wide range of influencers. Uh, and it's also being utilized by our influencer marketing firm to help leverage this information, leverage the, you know, the utility and the um, products that we're offering to onboard influencers. So let me see. It, it's likely it's already been um, uploaded. I can share the link. Yes, it has. Okay, now this is um, this is V1 of the pitch deck. Obviously, we're going to continue to improve it as we do. But 
I think this pitch deck does a great job of summing up the optimizer pools and Animal Farm in three pages, right? So it's perfect for people who are not going to take a lot of time. The first two pages explain essentially the whole v3 model the v3 optimizer model and the last page is just some basic information about our security about our vision etc so now the first page what we want to do here is explain pancake swap v3 explain what it's brought to the table what its downsides are and how we fully take advantage of the improvements they made while addressing and creating a solution for essentially the um the the downsides because honestly there are some downsides of v3 which is why it's had slower adoption than some of the other DEX models. Now, when you look at Uniswap, Uniswap V3 has essentially taken over at this point. It's had most of the major assets migrated over to V3. Why is that? Because there's a more mature development pool for Ethereum than there is for the Binance BSC ecosystem. So although no one has built a tool to the degree that we've built for Animal Farm, and in my opinion, no one has built a positive economic model like we have with Animal Farm V3, there has been a significant amount of development for v3 tools on the ethereum chain for uniswap and these tools are what drove the adoption of v3 because at the end of the day v3 is better now where is v3 lacking well let me get into that so i'm just going to read through this and i'm going to um explain and give you know more context to what i'm reading so and, and just you know for people who are just joining um we have gotten extremely far with testing um i have a follow-up meeting with the team after this but at this point we're prepared to do our final front end tests. So our final front end tests are group tests where we open up the platform on a side chain to anybody in the community that wants a chance to try it out and wants a chance to um, interact and help test the front end not only because it helps us uh from the perspective of we can do a lot in testing but there's only so much you can do with front end testing to simulate a wide user base right you can do things like testing um a bunch of wallets using scripts uh you can test a bunch of transactions, a bunch of volume, um, all kinds of different tests. But to test all the different mobile devices, all the different monitor sizes, all the different browsers, all the different wallets, um, and not to mention, get feedback from the user base with things that may seem obvious to us or may seem like the right way to do it to us like we may have some piece of analytics that we know exactly what it means 
because we built it and we've been working with it for months. But the community members, the user base might say, oh, you know, this is a bit confusing. Can you change this to this? Can you change that to that? And it required us to get through with all of our testing before we wanted to open it up to the public to do our final um, front end testing. That way, you know, we're not wasting people's time and we've gotten all of the things that we can clear up. And, um, and when we wrap up this process, which typically takes uh, two days, we're ready to give the launch date. So we're going to be planning it this weekend. Um, we will have the test uh, scheduled for early next week. I suggest that people join because when it goes live, you don't want to be, you know, if possible, seeing all of these things for the first time. This will give you a chance to go through the full migration process as you would be on launch day right now. So you will be completely familiar with every aspect of the V3 migration on launch day. Now, as I was saying earlier, I'm just repeating myself because I said it right at the start of the call. Um, V3 is going to be the easiest migration we have ever had. The reason for this is because it's impossible for you to make a mistake that could have a lasting impact on your position in Animal Farm, um, etc. Right? If you're currently in V2, you will be able to access the V3 front end. There will be a migrate button. You'll click the migrate button. It will pop up a modal that will show you your V2 position and your migration options. And it's impossible to mess up in a way that could have a lasting impact on you because there's no deposit, no withdrawal fees on V3. So even if you were to make a mistake and withdraw from V2 and not deposit into V3 or deposit to the wrong pool or the wrong amount, anything like that, it's not a big deal. And this is again why V3 is going to have so much easier of a time onboarding because depositing into one of our optimized pools is so low risk that it's open for you know anybody to experiment no matter how risk intolerant you are so that's where we're at People need to realize that we've made a lot of changes and we've had multiple curveballs thrown at us, right? So we had Binance announce that they are no longer supporting BUSD, right? When we were at the end stages of testing, this required us to phase BUSD out of V3 and phasing BUSD out of V3 was not a matter of swapping out some contract addresses or some token addresses in our contracts. It required us to rewrite multiple of our core contracts, including Pigpen, uh, including NFT manager, including multiple dog pound contracts, uh, including our native tokens in itself, including all of our um, 
fee manager contracts. It was a major overhaul. And doing this major overhaul is not as simple as doing the major overhaul because all of that work that we put into testing kind of got reset in a major way because we just had to change everything requiring us to redo a bunch of the tests that we had already done um but with that said in about two weeks we've done all of that and um I hired multiple extra devs to do that. Uh, you know, they've been working full time on it. We've gotten to the point where all of that development has done. We've done all of our testing in regards to those changes. And now all that's left to be done is the group public testing of the front end. So the changes that we made, oh, and I should say that when we had to do the full rewrite of all these contracts and the token contracts, that gave us the capability now of adding in a bunch of new tokenomics and a bunch of improvements to the system that really would not have been viable to do unless we were rebuilding everything. So, you know, the extra two weeks, two and a half weeks is absolutely worth it when you consider the massive improvements that we've made to the system. The fact that we've done updates to all of our contracts so in the future when we need to do slight updates add partner pools add these things it does not require a migration and the system as a whole has just been been you know made so much better um you know we went from afd being an asset that inflates to pay out rewards to AFD as an asset that deflates in supply while having a consistent positive cash flow going into it. Um, we've created the AFP model where it now has twice the amount of BNB allocated to it just based on the new economic model alone i'm not talking about um the fact that we're getting way more yield through our optimization and way more cake and way more trading fees i'm talking about the fact that the um afd tax has been altered to send twice the amount of bnb to the pig pen um and we did this to kind of rebalance the incentives of AFD and AFP now that AFD ha has become a, you know, massively bullish asset. Um, so, you know, that's where we're at. I just wanted to kind of repeat some of those things because, um, yeah, I know it's important. So I wanted to give that update while we have um, more people in the call so i'm gonna go through our pitch deck here um you know it would be great if you can share the pitch deck we built this pitch deck specifically for people finding out our about our project for the first time influencers non-technical people and you know technical people alike because even if someone is highly technical you need to give them the pitch before they're even interested in learning about the project. And that's what this is for. Right. So let me read through it. This first page is essentially explaining what PancakeSwap V3 is. And, and I just want to say, I'll get into the roadmap and the future vision 
for Animal Farm because everything we're doing right now for V3 is not unique to PancakeSwap, meaning every DEX on every EVM chain that has this kind of V3 model can be integrated into our system very easily, actually, because the pancake swap contracts are exactly the same as the Uniswap contracts um, and, you know, a range of other DEXs that take advantage of the V3 model. So there's a lot of opportunity there and a lot of low hanging fruit. And really the main thing to figure out there is just about how do we get the trading fees on ETH, for example, on the Ethereum chain into our assets and our pig pen and our dog pound without relying on a centralized bridging model. And we do have a solution to do that as well, but that's really the only thing that even requires any additional building. Um, and there's a whole lot more that we have planned for AFP. You know, we have a dedicated team for, sorry, for Animal Farm. We have a dedicated team for Animal Farm. So, um, you know, as soon as this is done, even while we're in the promotional phase, running up to the launch, we're going to be developing the next thing for Animal Farm. So it's going to be one thing after the other. Um, now, just to speak to, um, you know, someone asking about the piggy bank in the chat, and if I've, you know, spoken about it, I have spoken about it. I've spoken about it in multiple back-to-back -back voice chats and interviews. So I, I spoke about what we're going to do uh, with it in the last interview I did, in the last voice chat I did, um, multiple times in text, in the group, um, in the last DAO meeting. So, I mean, if you're wondering, have I addressed something? Chances are I have. Because if there's some, you know, major part of the ecosystem and you're wondering what's going to happen with it, you're not the only one. And, you know, the developers and the team realize these things as well. So most likely, if you're wondering about something, we've addressed it multiple times already. And you should just, you know, use the search option, maybe ask an admin, uh, go check out the last few interviews or VCs we did. Um, so with the piggy bank, what we're going to do is airdrop BNB liquidity of the AFP token based on your current value in the piggy bank. So essentially what your current stake in the piggy bank is worth at this point we will be airdropping you that in afp bnb &B liquidity of course there, there's several reasons for this for one it's because we are getting rid of busd pair for afp um with Binance phasing it out, there's going to be less and less BUSD liquidity in DEXs and available for trading. And it would not be prudent at all for us to keep a contract that locks liquidity using a pair that is going to have less and less available liquidity on the market. On top of this, the 
piggy bank model is currently well the piggy bank let's say contract or product is currently only holding about fifty four thousand dollars now we have a choice to make right where it's okay we have to um phase out busd piggy bank is a busd liquidity locker contract and our options are do we scrap it and relaunch it with bnb when it's not being utilized by a lot of users and this is made very evident by just looking at the amount of capital in it relative to everything else when we know it's an inferior model to the v3 model and the users that are currently in it would have a way higher probability of earning a profit in the new options that are available in v3 relative to piggy bank so for people that have capital locked in piggy bank right now uh we're essentially giving you you know a major opportunity to get your capital out of it and out of the busd pair which is being phased out on you know all chains get into a pair which we know is for one not going to get phased out and secondly is going to benefit from bnb's appreciation in the next bull market and allow you to utilize that afp in the pig pen or in any of the other uh you know available opportunities that you'll have in animal farm um and of course uh having fifty four thousand dollars or it's less now i believe worth of capital in there makes it a way easier choice to make we can um absolutely afford to um to get those people out and allow them to participate in models and in our products that are way more likely to give them profit and you know of course we, if it was you know a million dollars worth of lock liquidity then it would be like okay like this we have to come up with some solutions for the fact that we're about to take a, a million dollars worth of lock liquidity and essentially unlock it and, and airdrop it to people but because it's only fifty four thousand, it makes it way easier just to you know uh liberate those people's capital get them um unpaired from busd and into a pair that is going to uh you know stand the test of time and participate in everything else so um we have a a, essentially a formula which we've derived uh to be able to accurately calculate the value of everybody's position based on how much you've already claimed how much you've compounded and what you deposited uh, so that is what we're going to do um we're going to airdrop the liquidity tokens at the same time we do the token migration we plan to do the token migration two weeks before the full platform goes live that way in the two weeks promoting afv3 before it goes live 
the new capital coming in is coming into the new tokens. So we don't have to then, you know, bring people in and then take them through some, you know, confusing migration process. It also allows for us to get a head start on creating those positive, you know, good looking uh, analytics and price charts for the V3 launch. And it's going to cut back on the busyness and the questions and what everybody, you know, everybody trying to figure things out on launch day. Launch day will just be about launch. And um, we will also have the V3 front end, right? So you'll be able to click on the optimizer pool front end at least two weeks in advance from when it goes live this way people who are learning about us through the interviews and through the twitter spaces and through all of the promotion we're doing can be directed to the page where they can see the historical performance of our optimized positions the historical range and a bunch of other analytics that we built specifically to allow people to make a more educated decision on entering into our optimizer pools because we know if we provide the facts it's that much more attractive you know we like we know how powerful the optimizer pools are. We know how powerful our strategy is. So if people can easily see the historical performance, the current range, the amount in the current liquidity pool, the amount in our liquidity position, the amount of yield that we're earning, in APY, the amount of fees that we've collected, the amount of fees that have gone into AFD, the amount of AFD that has been burned. Um, if they're able to see all of these things, our, our compounding rate, the, you know, it's just uh, no deposit, no withdrawal fees. It's just undeniable, right? Anybody who has any interest in providing liquidity to earn yield will want to get in when they see these. So, this is why we've been spending the past week building a specific analytics page for each optimizer pool so people can enter the pool on the page, just the, a page similar to the V2 farm page. But when they click details, instead of having a small drop down, it takes them to an analytics page specifically about that pool with a bunch of information about it that just really, um, you know, seals the deal, in my opinion. All right. Um, now, and, you know, people will be able to see this. People will be able to see this in the um, public test of the front end. And likely... We're going to get that front end up right after the public test. So as I was saying, we're going to schedule the public test this weekend and uh, get them completed. Uh, we think it'll take one or two days and then that's it. And then we're ready to give the launch date. And we're going to have a relatively short um, promo period, right? But it's absolutely going to be worth it, right? It's, it's going to be hyper-focused, right? So the first week, we're going to spend it mostly doing the rounds in our own community, speaking to our influencers, our you know investor groups, getting everybody who's kind of been waiting on the sidelines, waiting a full update, our launch date, uh, all of the new tokenomics, all of that, right? And part of the reason for this is because we want to speak to the people who we already have on board just to get them fully educated 
and get them uh, basically in the fight to start promoting the launch date with all of the available tools and information. The second week, we're going to have at least two or three very big influencer uh, interviews. We're going to have a Twitter spaces on the uh, official Animal Farm group. We're going to make a major push to get trending uh, on Twitter. We're going to have several articles come out. Uh, and we're going to uh, do our first major public push of the new launch date and what Animal Farm has to offer. Then the next week um, is going to be essentially the, the week of launch, right? So this week, we're going to have at least three major outfacing interviews. They're going to be with some of the biggest influencers that we can secure, but we're not just looking for numbers. We're looking for people that are specifically focused on earning yield in DeFi and people who have an audience that are interested in being liquidity providers and earning yield. We want to secure at least one interview before launch as well. That is, um, you know, an Alio Trades, a, um, an Ivan on Tech, you know, just a, um, you know, one of the top 10, essentially. Um, and that we want that to be a couple days before launch, right? Or, you know, potentially the day before launch. Then we're going to have our launch. And post-launch is where we're going to really hit the ground running because we don't want to spend a lot of our marketing resources on the big names that can drive capital in when we don't have a place that people can see it and immediately get in. And that's important. So the run-up, right, is a week of speaking to our own community getting everybody updated on the launch date on the um all the new uh tokenomics and you know the new economic model of our system and providing them with the tools and information second week is going to be our first major push with big, you know, uh, outside of the community influencers. And then the next week will be launch week. And launch week is where we're going to um, try to secure our biggest influencers. Um, our biggest influencers, I would say, outside of the top two or three, who we will save until post launch so um probably like one week of launch a few a week after launch like that because um by that point we'll have made a big splash we'll already have gotten uh, a, a a nice wave from outside of our community, we will have already proven that our system uh, works. There were no issues. It launched smoothly, and um, yeah, and then and then our our resources can really be put to best use um, because we actually have a product to drive people into. It's not promoting a launch date or a you know something to come. It's something that already exists. So. Um, so we're going to really narrow it down to um, to about two and a half weeks, right? With um, that third week 
of doing promotion the launch week. Um, so that's where we're at. Um, but this is not going to be a, um, a thing where we're just kind of sitting around waiting, right? The first week, we're going to handle the token migration. And getting up the V3 front end. The second week is going to be and doing the rounds in our community. The second week, we'll have the migration already done. We'll have the V3 front end done. And we're going to start the outfacing promotion. And then next week, it's a few really big interviews, you know, articles, the whole thing, and uh, and launch. So, all right, guys. Now, let me, let me go through the pitch deck. And then after the pitch deck, I'm just going to hit... Um, I'm going to hit some roadmap things where where we're going from here. All right. So pancake swap. So this is pancake swap V3. And, and this is meant to kind of explain problem solution, right? So pancake swap is a decentralized exchange platform designed for easy cryptocurrency trading with minimal fees and no intermediary. PancakeSwap v2 was notable for its ease of use, particularly due to its fully automated liquidity management. However, when it comes to liquidity provision, it falls short compared to PancakeSwap v3. PancakeSwap v3's strength lies in its ability to offer unique and customizable market-making strategies, giving liquidity providers greater flexibility and control in optimizing their assets so these are some of the benefits with v3 concentrated liquidity for maximum efficiency so you can concentrate your capital in specific ranges for optimal trading efficiency all while choosing where your assets work harder reducing slippage and enhancing capital preservation and essentially what this means is v3 allows liquidity providers to provide liquidity in a way that allows for more efficient trading that results in less slippage for traders while allowing liquidity providers capital to work harder for them and this is important because this is going to be one of our major selling points when it comes to partner pools, because not only will we allow and incentivize people to add liquidity to partner pools and earn more trading fees, which in turn also is a major co-promotion for these partner pools. We also allow for our partner assets to have a more efficient market this means less slippage for people that want to enter their token and less negative price impact with selling and potentially more positive price impact with buying so it's a very important and you know improvement for v3 but um it it comes with trade-offs right so with that main trade-off being that liquidity positions are no longer automated like they were with V2, where it was a set it and forget it. Another major improvement with with PancakeSwap V3 is syrup pools with variable APY. So staked NFT liquidity positions or stake liquidity position nfts in the syrup pools earn cake with an adjustable apy based on your liquidity range concentration this means people who are providing more liquidity in a concentrated range relative to someone who's providing that same amount of liquidity but in a less concentrated range are earning more cake. 
what this means is that our optimized liquidity positions are earning more cake in the syrup pools than what would be earned by someone not in an optimized position and greatly more than what someone would earn in Uniswap V2, for example. And this makes a big difference, not just for V3, but also relative to what we're earning right now. Because right now, PancakeSwap has essentially taken all of the cake. When I say all, I mean, you know, 90% of the cake that was being allocated to the V2 pools and has allocated it to the V3 syrup pool. And because the V3 syrup pools um, are not overly crowded like the V2 pools, it's a major opportunity for us to get in there with our concentrated position and make way, way more cake than we're currently making now and what we could earn in V2. So the... Cake that's being earned in the syrup pool is being swapped for BNB and paid out to the pig pen. Our optimized syrup pool positions are earning around eight times more cake than what we are currently earning in our V2 pool. You know, I should say eight times more than what we were earning in our V2 pools before PancakeSwap allocated the majority of the cake rush to V3. So I'm comparing what our current optimized NFTs will earn in V3 relative to what we were earning in V2 at its peak, right? When we were, um, before they announced V3, before they migrated V3, and we were earning uh, cake swap from BNB, you know, at its peak. Um, that eight times more is not including compounding. That is just the flat rate, our optimized position relative to the V2 position, 8X, right? When you consider compounding, the realized, APY is much, much higher. Um, now, and enhanced earnings and strategy. So empower market makers to maximize fee earnings through strategic liquidity concentration, right? This is um, essentially what we've already spoken about, but it's just, you know, um, laid out clearly here because obviously I'm giving extra context as we go. Someone that's just reading this would need that context. So that's why it's there. And uh, maximize capital by optimizing your liquidity provider's range without constant updates, right? So um, this is actually something that um, that needs to change. So I, I need to, um, this is something that needs to be edited.
Now, the reason why I'm saying this needs to be edited is because um, it does technically allow for this, but it allows for this because of what we've built on Animal Farm. So I just, um, you know, I feel like if we kept it in the pancake shop section, it would be a little confusing, right? It's like, what is the, um, uh, the point of Animal Farm, you know, to some extent, if pancake swap alone allows you to do this. So, um, so that just needs to be, uh, edited. And actually I just want to tell, um, uh, the document writer that it needs to be edited and I saw there's a message from him saying he made some changes so maybe he already made that change um so liquidity challenges PancakeSwap v3 liquidity provision introduces complexity earnings depend on a narrow price range making management challenging this complexity requires active management reducing passive earnings so you know this speaks directly to um, what I just mentioned, but still, I want to make it absolutely clear by removing that, that last, uh, cost-effective section. Um, so this is, this is the trade-off, right? Uh, V3 allows you to really have a lot of flexibility over your liquidity position, reducing your risk and increasing your yield if managed correctly, but it relies on users to actively manage their position correctly. And the majority of users either end up with a range that is so wide that they're barely collecting anything at all, or they are constantly providing a range that the price moves outside of within days and they are no longer earning and that is exactly what our optimized pools address while also handling compounding and also integrating a full incentive model due to the rest of our contracts and, and the rest of animal farm right the dog pound our native tokens pig pen so animal farm right i'm gonna now i'm gonna read the animal farm part which kind of addresses what was just mentioned over there so simplifying liquidity management animal farm is the first deflationary fully decentralized ownership yield aggregating lending protocol in DeFi where participants earn as owners of the platform. Animal Farm emerges as a groundbreaking solution to the liquidity management challenges on PancakeSwap v3 while leveraging its capabilities to re re revolutionize DeFi, offering user, offering user simplified, profitable services and empowering their DeFi experience. Um, range optimization algorithm. Animal Farm's V3 flagship product automates liquidity range adjustment, maximizing earnings without manual intervention, leveraging PancakeSwap's V3 innovative technology. Animal Farm V3 optimizes liquidity position on PancakeSwap V3, allowing users to allocate assets to specific price ranges increasing earnings while reducing risk associated with price fluctuations. Users earn AFD and AFP tokens, becoming part owner of Animal Farm and collecting BNB from platform cash flows, enhancing their DeFi experience. Say goodbye to deposit and withdrawal fees and embark on a journey where every transaction counts towards your prosperity. So, right, now this gets into more of the uh, 
technical stuff. And um, and you know, as I'm reading that, there's uh, already some some changes that I know I want to be made to it because I gave the uh, feedback on the pitch deck, you know, before this morning and uh, was given this version, but right before I came in the call, when my feedback was uh, implemented and it was, um, you know, some of it was not implemented. So um, I already know some changes that need to be made uh, to this, but um, so this, you know, l basically less buzzwords, right? I, I I gave feedback that was cutting out a lot of the buzzwords and, uh, you know, he, they kind of just got included anyways, but, um, all right. So the, um, this gets into more of the details and, uh, animal farm V3 offers a revolutionary revolutionary solution to the challenges faced in managing liquidity on PancakeSwap v3. Our range optimization algorithm automates the placement and adjustment of liquidity range, maximizing their earnings and removing the need for constant manual adjust, adjust, adjustments. Liquidity staked through Animal Farm v3 benefits from range optimization from the range optimization algorithm, which analyzes historical price data, market volatility, order book data, and real-time price action to determine the best the best range for liquidity placement. And this um, little chart here is actually a um, an example of a real um, section that we just took uh, from our optimized position. So this is an actual range um, that we've been providing uh, our liquidity position to. And you can see in this range how it's able to adjust very quickly That's to this right here. changes in market conditions. So this is actually showing if it uh, like that we're gonna make some money guys pretty significant amount of price data and as you can see from the, the period of one to three it's a tight price range and then the because the market drops down in a very significant way the range automatically adjusts to widen which ensures the price does not fall outside of our range and then with the volatility reducing on the trading range you see how the range of our liquidity position also tightens and in this case it tightens down to the point where we're providing a five to seven percent range for weeks and to be able to have a automated liquidity position that is able to provide liquidity to Bitcoin USDT, for example, over the past three years with an average of a 15% range across the three years with at some, you know, some of those weeks having as low as a 4% range and other weeks having up to a 40% range, but only having the price escape our liquidity position range 
six times in the whole year is um is extremely good performance his performance that i would doubt anybody who is manually managing their position would be able to achieve and it's because the algorithm that i built is based on a decade of experience that i have both building market making software because that's one of the major things that i did before i got into um doing anything in DeFi. i was building market making software um in python to add liquidity on centralized exchanges to altcoins before uniswap even existed right and the fact that we've been able to train this on three years worth of price data so when you have three years worth of price data and we got that and when i say three years worth of data it's not just price data we've been able to secure three years worth of price data order book data um essentially all relevant analytical data associated with a DEX liquidity position. So we did this by kind of cheating and training our model on Uniswap because Uniswap has had a um, V3 option for a lot longer than PancakeSwap. So um, we've done all of our historical backtesting on Uniswap data. But because it's the same contracts and because um, there's essentially no variance between um, price action on Uniswap or PancakeSwap uh, for the assets that we're providing liquidity to. Right, because we're only providing liquidity on major assets that get actively arbitraged, you know, 24 7, 365. Um, we were able to get a very strong uh, back testing data that we could train our model on. So I was able to create a very strong starting algorithm based on my experience. And then we were able to spend uh, months um, training it. So now I'm going to get into some of the uh, tokenomics of our model. So Animal Farm V3 leverages PancakeSwap V3's capital efficiency and liquidity concentration capabilities to provide users with optimized liquidity position strategies. This approach allows liquidity providers to enter into PancakeSwap V3 pools through Animal Farms optimized pools to increase their fee collection by more than 5X. 95% of fees collected are added to user's principal through compounding, securing their profit in the form of BNB, ETH, wrapped Bitcoin, USDT, and other high valued assets. Compounded collected, compounding collected re- fees into users' principal liquidity position also greatly increases their ability to earn. AFD token holders benefit from a portion of transaction fees through yield and deflationary mechanisms while afd token holders receive rewards rewards and oh okay let me just say that again afd token holders benefit from a portion of trading fees through yield 
and deflationary mechanisms. Yeah, that needs to be edited. So just so you guys know, I I gave a bunch of feedback to the person who created the docs and he just got it back to me while I was setting up the uh, uh, the call and I wanted to go over this in the call. So like as soon, you guys, people who are on in the beginning of the call know that I was like um, actually preparing this, like just downloading this while I was on the call. So, um, so uh, AFD token holders benefit from portion of transaction fees through yield and deflationary mechanisms, while AFP token holders receive rewards and have a say in the project's governance through voting proposals. AFD fee distribution. AFD tokens earn a 3% fee from all transactions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll still go over this, but I mean, the, there's some things that need to change here, right? So I'm just going to say it as it's supposed to be written, as the feedback that I gave. So uh, AFD, to- 3% of all trading fees collected go towards buying back AFD. Two thirds of these fees, I mean, two thirds of this AFD that is bought back is distributed to the liquidity providers as yield. The remaining one third is burned, reducing the total supply of AFD tokens. This makes AFD a deflationary asset. Creating a positive cash flow into the AFD token. 2% of trading fees and cake tokens earned in the syrup pools are converted to BNB. These BNB rewards are distributed to AFP token stakers in the governance pool. AFP token holders as part owners of Animal Farm receive these rewards and have the ability to vote on proposals for the project's future development. Um, I hope that <laughs> when I read this, I hope that he just took actually what I wrote and, and put it in here instead of like changing things because oh. all right uh, so this is just uh, a page that basically uh, is a review and um, and an explanation of kind of uh, the security that the platform offers. So Animal Farm V3 is set to revolutionize the DeFi sector with its innovative approach to decentralized ownership and advanced liquidity management tools. These tools significantly amplify the earning potential of liquidity providers and channel capital into our deflationary assets. Brace yourself for a DeFi transformation as we unveil the unprecedented feature of zero deposit fees and deposit and withdrawal fees, making it even more enticing to experience what we have to offer. This isn't just an upgrade. This is a paradigm shift that offers a low risk way to earn passive income and in top assets to your crypto journey. Animal Farm allows you to earn BNB, ETH, wrap Bitcoin, USDT, and more without ever needing to sell our native tokens to secure profit. Yes, you read that right. Animal Farm allows everyone to earn as the wealthy do by accumulating assets and putting these assets to work for you. 
but not just ownership of these assets, ownership of the platform as a whole through our one-of-a-kind governance structure. With Animal Farm V3, users can embrace a hassle-free experience that simplifies liquidity management and eliminates excessive fees. Animal Farm is built on open source software that has been battle tested in both live and simulated environments, as well as undergone multiple third party audits. All contracts are non custodial, meaning users always maintain sole control over their assets. In addition, Animal Farm native asset pools are completely decentralized. This transparency and decentralization empowers all users to take security into their own hands and enter our project with confidence. So that's basically it. And then it just has a little bit, uh, a link to our project, etc. cetera. Now, um, before I came into this call, I gave a bunch of feedback at, uh, to the, um, uh, to the doc writer, basically, um, a bunch of sections that I felt needed to be cleared up, needed to, um, you know, be more to the point, not repeat the same thing, you know, five times, etc. And, um, and I got this back right before I came on the call and, you know, a lot of the feedback I gave was, like added to or written in his own words or, you know, some of the things were not removed. So, um, although this does a, a good job, I would say, uh, at getting the point across, um, right after I get off this, I'm going to tell the writer to, uh, to just write the feedback I gave word for word, right? Because, it cuts down on a lot of the buzzwords and uh, a lot of the repeating the same thing over and over again. So um, I'm going to make sure that change happens. And tomorrow we're going to, uh, um, you know, post this all over our social medias, etc. Right? The uh, the edited version. Now, with um, our roadmap. So there are a lot of things I'm very excited to do with Animal Farm. They all largely revolve around capital management, building tools to allow users to more efficiently utilize their capital to earn yield and this is um, going to be mainly focused around different forms of lending and liquidity management tools. So one thing that we're going to get out and it's going to be the, ne the next thing that we release for Animal Farm after the optimizer pools is going to be a tool that allows users to manually set up their own automated strategy. So users will be able to stake their liquidity NFT or create a liquidity NFT through PancakeSwap. And rather than it going into our optimized pool with our optimized strategy, you'll be able to set multiple conditions and then sign a transaction that essentially gives the platform approval to carry out your strategy based on the conditions that you set. This is going to be, I would say, the other major piece for V3 adoption. Right? I think a lot of people 
are going to be interested in getting into our optimized pools because people will be hard pressed to create their own optimized liquidity strategy that would outperform ours. But we will provide the tools for people to set up their own optimized strategy and essentially sign approvals ahead of time for the platform to spend a gas out of your wallet to do things like compound your position into the future, etc. Um, this will come with a suite of analytical tools to make setting your position um, uh, easier and um, allow you to do it in a more educated way. Now, just like the optimizer pools, a share of the fees earned through these positions will go towards buying back AFD and sending BNB to the pick pump. This is going to be the first thing we're going to do because um, we already have all of the tools to do it due to our development of our optimized pools, right? So that's something that we can get out quickly and something that is another major utility for B3. We will then focus on lending both peer-to-peer -peer lending and lending in the form of leverage this means users will be able to lock up their capital as collateral to be able to take loans and utilize capital to be able to leverage their position with these loans. So I'm very excited to do a peer-to-peer -peer lending model that allows users to create lending pools very similar to the way that people can create pools on a DEX where we're not restricting lending pools to a small amount of assets like you see on every other lending platform. It's like Bitcoin and ETH. The reason why it's two or three assets is because they have a DAO model in order to um, set rates and essentially create the model which is used for what would otherwise be taken care of in a decentralized um, system through regular market pressures. So our model would allow supply and demand to dictate rates and use an auction type of system very similar to a DEX to match lenders and borrowers at fixed rates that they agree on and not through some manual agreement where they have to specifically engage with each other, but in a very efficient way where if your ranges overlap, your trades meaning your, your loans are issued. Now, having a lending model like this allows us to build futures contracts on top of this because we can use our lending model as a mechanism of leverage. And we can have leverage futures positions built on top of our lending model in a way more powerful and efficient way than anybody is doing.
because we allow actual market pressures to dictate what tokens we allow leverage on, what rates people charge, um, etc. So, um, because these kind of come as a package, this is what we plan to do after the manual strategy product. And, um, and past that, there's a whole range of things that I'm very interested in doing. One of them being on-chain options. Um, now, consider that doing futures gives another massive opportunity for people to earn yield through staking assets. And interestingly, single asset staking. So that's another reason why this is something that I'm very eager to bring to the table because it will again allow for single asset staking on Animal Farm V3 and allow users to earn significantly high yield on their single assets. Um, so we have a dedicated team for Animal Farm. This weekend, we're going to prepare the group public testing of the front end this weekend. We're going to have that. Anybody who's in uh, the community or outside of the community, literally anybody, can come join. You can see the platform. You can see the progress. You can experience the migration and really just prepare yourself for launch date. Um, this typically takes two days because of the work that we put in it should be one day to do the full public testing integrate any changes we need to make and then a follow-up day to um to get feedback on any changes we made and then we're ready to go we're ready to go with the launch date so um so we're right around the corner um when I got out of this call, I'm going to make a few changes to the pitch deck. Uh, I'm going to prepare it all to go uh, live on tomorrow's social media posts. And then I will, um, I will start planning for our group testing. And we will be making announcements about that uh, over the weekend. So I'm going to hop off and I'm going to go into a, uh, a meeting. Uh, a dev meeting to basically um, get an update on everything that's happened since uh, our last meeting, which is mostly going to be things uh, relative to front end and the performance testing, which we're going to be doing every day up until launch and post launch to dial in our strategies and um, likely release additional optimized strategies post launch that will give people a little bit of flexibility uh, and allow them to make a little bit more of a speculative decision on um, how they think the market is going to be over the next uh, you know few months or a few weeks whatever their forward projection time frame is so all right guys I'll be active over the weekend in the chat giving updates and um, I would suggest that people that are in V2 uh, come and join us for the group testing. We're almost there, guys. We put in a ton of work. You know, we made a lot of very big improvements that needed to be made. And um, that we got it done quick. So very exciting. So shout out to the squad out there. Uh, tune in tonight. Tune in tonight live at the D Gen Cipher as we, you know, condense 
Uh, some of that that Forex just said, I'm going to explain my thoughts on it and, you know, why it's extremely bullish for the whole ecosystem and also potentially some drip network alpha. So shout out to everybody in the building. See you guys at 1230 a.m. EST at the DJ Cypher. Salute to the squad out there.